Hey everybody, um, I haven't made a video in a while. I just thought I'd, uh, with everything going on recently and the different complaints I've been getting from my customers and the latest viruses going around, I figured I'd uh, post a video showing you how to do a um, do an online video. Or, Jesus. I figured I'd post a video showing you guys how to do a, uh, a computer. Yeah, I can't even talk to the camera. I thought I'd do a video showing you guys how to run a, a virus scan for yourself. And there's a, a real nice online program called uh, Trend Micro. And they do a pretty good job on their, their online scan. So the following instructions are going to show you how to, are going to walk you through that step by step on how to do a virus scan for yourself. And maybe to save you a trip to the doctor. Or your computer anyway. So here we go. A lot of new viruses out there and although you might have the, the latest the greatest virus protection it's a good idea every once in a while and do an online scan. Type in house call into Google I tell you go right to the main site, but it's usually the first one that comes up. It's Trend Micro Free Online Virus Scan. You'll see an icon right here in the center. It says Scan Now It's Free. You'll click on that. It'll load another page. Scan Now It's Free. Click on that again. Oh, quiet, Tanner. You'll see the page load, and, and like anything else, it's going to ask you to accept their license agreement. Click Launch House Call. This usually takes a few minutes. This one's saying uh, Java support is disabled on my machine, or no Java runtime environment is installed. If you happen to get that error, it's actually not an error, it's just letting you know you're missing something. It'll come up with a link on its website. And it'll take you to the java.com to verify your your installation. Open that full screen. Click on begin download. And you'll notice you'll get that little bar comes up under your browser that says uh, this site might require the following ActiveX controls. And if you know what site you're going to, you want to go ahead and Click in that box and say install ActiveX control. And if you know what site you're at and uh, you trust that you know it's a reputable site, then you can go ahead and download and install that ActiveX control. An ActiveX control is something that just just basically an extra control that your computer needs to complete a certain function. And in this case it's installing Java. So the Java window pops up. Um, we're going to go to custom setup. And you always want to, if you're installing something, you might always want to go to custom setup because that gives you the option to turn the third-party software on or off that comes with most programs, which we're going to find when in this. So we, otherwise, if you go to typical setup, it installs all that garbage for you, and you don't need it. So we'll go to custom setup. Of course, accept the agreement. Now on this one, it's got see the custom setup let me let me into this extra panel here where I don't need the additional um, languages and I really don't need the help and support so I can turn those two things off see otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do that now Java is going to ask you if you want to import any uh, browser settings or anything into Java and if you're running Microsoft Internet Explorer or Mozilla which I'm not running Mozilla so I'm gonna check that one off but I'm gonna go ahead and let it make the changes to my Internet Explorer you know here's the other part of that third-party software see it wants me to install a Google toolbar well I don't want the Google toolbar but if I had clicked on default install then it would have gave me that anyway but being as I went to custom install I have the option to turn that off.
Okay, and you click next to continue the next window. It's installing Java. And if you've got a dial-up connection, well, it might take a while to make this happen. But if you've got a dial-up connection, you're probably not watching this video anyway. I know I wouldn't be. Some customers, I work on their computers and they got dial-up and I just cringe. Oh, it takes so long, man. You get spoiled by the cable. You get spoiled by fast and easy. Okay, the installation's complete. You click finish. Now it's checking the configuration. And that'll run for just a second to make sure everything's installed okay. There we go. Now we can close that page. We're going to go back and we're going to hit the refresh button on to reload the page. And it'll find that we have Java installed now. Okay, we'll click yes again to perform the scan. Now if you've already got Java installed, it, it would have gone right straight to this. So um, Actually going here is, serves two purposes. It'll scan your computer for viruses and it'll check to see if you have the latest Java software, which you need. So we'll click on Start House Call. Now this is going to load another application. And you know who the publisher is. It says security warning. It's just for, because of Microsoft and the way they do things, trying to protect you. But you know it's from Trend Micro, and that's where you're at. So we're going to click Always Trust the Content from that publisher so this doesn't keep bothering you. And click Run. Next page, you're going to click Scan Complete Computer for Malware, Grayware, and Vulnerabilities. Click Next. That's going to check for spyware and viruses. Now every time I've ran this scan so far, on five different computers this week, I know it's, it's got to be something with their site. I think it's because of the latest updates in XP, Windows XP. Basically it says an error occurred while trying to transfer data from the internet. Do you want Trend Microhouse Call to try resending the required files? And every time I've said yes, it didn't work. It kept coming back with an error. It said my internet connection was too slow which I've checked and it's running at like 4 gigs or 4 yeah, four megs so it's not really slow and it's just something with their site so I click cancel and the scan completes and goes through just fine so now here's a little trick I don't know if any of you guys know or I'm just being redundant here but whenever you're running a scan it shows you what files it's scanning if you're wondering how much time is left how long how much longer is this thing gonna run well, you can pretty much tell by looking at this because it runs in alphabetical order. And right now we're at C drive, which I only have one drive in here, so. But it's at Documents and Settings, and it's searching my personal folders on this particular machine. Eventually, this will get down to Windows, and then Windows System 32. And once it gets that close, then you know it's almost done. Okay, now it's saying we have 20 minutes left. And there's no more pop-ups or, or anything like that that'll that should come up on you. If there is one, I'll. Uh, but I'm going to turn the camera off. And then if I get another pop-up, I'll turn it back on. Um, otherwise, I'll turn it on when the scan's done and show you what's next. I could play intermission music for you, but that you know. Hey, it's only been like 10 minutes, and there's five minutes left, and it said it started with 20. So it really shouldn't take you all that long. We're almost done. Okay, and we're back. Uh, this is showing that we have one Trojan down download Tanner, stop! This is showing that we have one t Trojan downloader, one Trojan small dot CJW, a few of the grayware, spyware cookies. Uh, we're going to click on remove all cookies. It's already set to clean all detected viruses, which has only found two, so that's pretty good. And they have 38 cookies. I think all cookies are spyware because they, they watch what you do. They, the cookies, the little file that's left on your computer, looks like a little notepad file. And that's basically just so the, when you revisit that website, they know who you are by reading your cookie. Um, they're not really dangerous, but some of them could be malicious, I guess. Now this found all kinds of vulnerabilities in Windows, but that's because this com particular computer hasn't been 
updated recently so if you want to read more documentation on that particular threat but if you go out and get all the windows updates then uh, and then did a rescan of this I imagine most of these would be gone so what you want to do is go down to the bottom of the page well, there's a lot and click on clean now and then it's going to ask you for some infections delete was selected to remove this will delete the infected file from the system it says important data may be lost but in reality if it's if that file is infected with a virus you can't keep it so I don't know why they even bother giving you that warning because you really don't have a choice whether to delete it or not but well, most of the times if it's not a really bad virus it's not going to attach itself to a, a really important system file that you need and you click OK and it's deleting the viruses it still says preparing you know it says actually deleting active grayware and spyware according to our instructions all infections were deleted or removed click OK to continue the page is going to refresh okay and the viruses are gone that left the uh, the security warnings they are not warnings they're just letting you know about different vulnerabilities that are out there which is an everyday occurrence with Microsoft well, they say if you go out and get out uh, Windows updates and run the updates and uh, get all the critical updates then uh, your results here would be minimal I suppose I'd say if you do feel a need to go out and if you like to read and you want to go and visit these links for the to read the documentation on the vulnerability you can click on the link below that and it'll open up a new window and take you to the Microsoft site telling you about the vulnerability um, what the affected software is, the affected components general information, acknowledgments and tells you to go to the software update to to fix it so and that's it so it's a good idea to do this once in a while or when you see your computer slowing down acting up so I hope it helps